So I've got a bunch of items and your piece might look similar to this where you kind of pulled some item in, in, items into your background, um, into your project. And, and now you're like, well, now, now what do I do with them? Right? So I've kind of got a space background here. I, I like all things space and I've got all my different items. So I'm going to give you some tips and tricks to create a very interesting montage. Okay. So first of all, um, if you notice there's like item, 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 how do, how, what can I do that would make this more interesting? Well, what I would definitely consider is spreading some of these items out and letting them overlap. By overlapping things, you automatically create more interest. Now I've got a little edge down here that I didn't clean up very well. Plus the dog is clearly standing on something. So I'm going to ground him and stick him all the way down here at the bottom. So he's right on the very edge of my piece, almost like he's howling and all these things are in space then, right? Um, I've got this star Lord image here. I want him to be nice and large. So I'm going to stretch him and I want him to fit like in, he's in the background. If you notice, he's the layer right above my background here. And what I could do with this, once I stretch him out and I spread him out here is it, there's a lot of competing things going on. And one of your requirements in the project is to play with your layer modes. So I'm on the layer star Lord here. I'm on the layer of star Lord. I'm gonna go up to where it says normal and I'm going to scroll through my layer modes. Now the keyboard shortcut, as long as I have the move tool selected is shift plus shift, shift plus and shift minus will allow me to scroll through the different layer modes. So I want them kind of like faded into the background. I like that one right there. Something else that you can do is rotate items. If I bring my cursor out to the edge, I can rotate this item. I'm actually going to spread this out and I'm going to kind of put it over here in the corner. I don't need to know the whole thing, see the whole thing. I mean, you know what the Starbucks um, logo looks like. I don't need to see the whole thing. And it's actually more interesting when things get cut off. Now I'm going to go click on um, Star Lord and kind of shift him over just a little bit. Um, I have these two selected. I have my move tool highlighted in use, and I have these two selected. That's what's allowing me to click on these individual layers and move myself around. Okay, back to Starbucks. Um, there's two ways that I can get rid of the white background on the Starbucks logo here, right? One of those ways is to play with those good old layer modes. Multiply is a great one that gets rid of, and if I want, let's see if I can get the colors to be there, but no white background. Let's see if there's one in here that will allow me to do that. Looks like I'm not seeing one. Um, but let's say I went up here to multiply, right? Or let's say I wanted to, let's see, I don't know. I don't know which one I want to get out of here. I kind of like that one. Let's say I did that, right? So now I could see that what's happening through it, but I still want to get rid of this white. You have a tool here called the magic eraser. If the magic wand selects everything of one color, the magic eraser will eliminate everything of one color. So I can do that. If I missed a spot, I can go up there and get that. I'm actually going to grab my standard eraser tool and just boink, get rid of that little piece right there. So layer modes is one way to get rid of that white background. Another way, another thing to do is to use your magic eraser. Something else I want you to consider, if you're using square images or if you have an image that is cut, what I call cut off, this image is cut off. His head is actually cut off too, but I'm going to resolve that. I don't want him floating in space. I can resolve this one of two ways. I can create a layer right above him. I just created a new layer. I'm going to double click on that layer to name it. Notice that my layers are named. If you double click where the text is, you can name the layer. Let's do Starbucks. Oops, oops. Starbucks. There we go. So, oh, something else that you can do with the at hard edge is to put a brush under it. So let me take a brush. I'm going to create a brush layer. I'm going to grab my brush tool. Um, I've downloaded some cool brushes. How about if I go, oh, these are my go-to, my go-to kind of splattery dudes. Um, I'm going to go with black um, and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I can rotate this. If I come into here, I can rotate it a little bit. And let's say I did that. Now I've just disguised that bad, that hard edge, right? I could put modes on it. I could put modes on him, but that's one way to get rid of that hard edge. Another way to get rid of that hard edge is to ground it. So if you take that item that's got that hard edge to it and you ground it at the bottom of your piece, now it makes sense. He's right up close to me, um, right up close to the very, in the foreground, right? He's kind of in the foreground there. Maybe I kind of like that one like there. Now, if you notice, I got a little bit of a halo around him, right? See that little bit of a pixel halo that's popping up. A great way to disguise the pixel halo is to create a layer style. Let me come down here. Um, and I'm going to put what's called the outer glow. Now, if you click on this item, it applies the outer glow, but I don't get any um, settings here to modify. So if I click on the word outer glow, now I can go in and I could say, you know what? I need it to be a little bit lighter right towards the edge. Um, I want to, I can play with the spread and the size. I can even change the color of it. This would be changing the color of it. Noise. I'm going to noise it up. So it's got like little edges to it, kind of like the stars that are in the background there. And I'm happy with that. I just added an effects. This little guy right here collapses the effect. So if you want to kind of move it so you can't see it. Something else cool that you can do is I can duplicate effects. So see, I've I'm, I'm got my cursor over here on this FX. Option or Alt duplicates. Um, and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to 
hold option or alt and I'm going to take that I'm going to drop it on another layer so I could really build a rich piece by taking those effects and, and almost applying them to a bunch of different places or you know what if the effect is too much I could take just the effect and delete it, it wouldn't delete my layer that was there okay Something else you might be throwing together is a hard edge. So this is like a photograph, right? Now, I guess I could go in, I could select that, but let's say I want to showcase the whole piece, right? Those are my kids. I want to showcase the whole piece in my um, example here. So you could do one of two things. You can play with modes, but modes are not going to work for me because I don't want it to be too blended. I want to be able to see them really well. I like that one. It was kind of cool. Something else that I could do is I could put them in a frame. So I just went and found a frame. I'm going to make sure that that photo is underneath the frame and now I can modify the frame to fit the photo. Just an aside, um, when you change the size of something like this, it is proportional. The width and the height are changing at the same time. But if you hold shift on the keyboard, you can take it out of proportions. And for certain items, like let's say this frame, right, that's a rec could be a rectangle, could be a square, could be whatever I want it to be, um, that it doesn't matter. Proportion doesn't necessarily matter for that piece. If I did that for my kids or for one of these figures, I could really mess up their face or other parts of the image there. Now, if I wanted to move both of these things at the same time, I could hold shift on my keyboard and grab both of the items and change the size of them at the same time, right? If I wanted to do something like that. All right. I covered layer mode. I covered layer styles. I have things that are overlapping. I've created the illusion of depth. There are things in the back. There are things in the front. I'm balancing my space, right? I've kind of got things in all corners. Um, one of the other requirements of the project is a brush. Now we, I've, I have other tutorials with brushes, so you can see I have a whole layer here. I created a new layer. I put my brush in there. Those are called um, Nerd Spirals. That's in the resources folder from brushking.eu. Um, but this layer right here, I'm going to go and put a mode on that as well. Why not? Let's see what happens. Ooh, I could get some really cool color effects by blending that into the background there. Let's see. I don't know where I want to highlight that. I like that. Do that. Um, and then I also created a layer at the top. I created this layer at the top. So now I've got brushes in the background behind the dog and the the other items here. Now I've got this one in the front. Now because this one was in the front, if you notice what I did, I did create a new layer. I put it in there. Let me slide this dog over just a little bit. Um, this I had already done this, but I erased from this, right? I didn't want this one to be so um, so blended, and so I erased from this layer, so it just kind of fit in there. But actually, now that's going over the faces of my children. Um, let me see what else I could do with this. Maybe something like that. Something like that, kind of bring out the cool green color. Let me move this guy over. I don't need to see all the Star Lord. And I've got a good start here to my self portrait, right? It's representative of me, the things that I like. Um, it's got my kids in there. And from there, um, you would need to include at least 15 items. Um, think about shadows, things of, think about light and darkness, other things that you can do, image adjustments. I can make image adjustments here. Maybe I want the dog to be black and white. This is one that I could frequently get asked how do I turn something black and white? image adjustments, black and white. I can come in here and I can modify like how light or dark the different colors were that you could see. And I could even tint it. I could tint it a certain color if I wanted to. And this, here's the saturation of it there. Something else that's cool, image adjustments, brightness, contrast. Maybe something's just a little too dark and I want to brighten it up. Or in this case, it's a little too bright and I want to darken it up a little bit. Um, contrast is the difference between the lights and the dark. So that's a kind of a fun one to experiment with as well. One other very cool one, image adjustments and hue saturation. This will completely change the colors on your piece, but you can have a lot of fun with that. Maybe if I wanted to kind of blend it in with the blue that was there, I could have some fun with that. Again, here's your saturation, how much color is in there. Final stages of this piece, right? Oops, I applied that. Final stages of this piece would be to flatten it, layer, flatten image. Now, this is after you make sure you have all your components that are necessary requirements for the project. I flatten the image so it's now one piece. Oh, I have some hidden layers in there. It's okay. And then I'm going to put a filter on it. One of the best ways to pull all these different pieces, this composition together, is to put a filter on it. Now, chances are your image is large. Go to the bottom left corner, and you're going to minimize it. Um, you're going to minimize this so you can see the whole thing. And when you're choosing a filter, I don't want you to pick one that's too too harsh. Keep it subtle, right? I love film grain. I love poster edges. I'm actually going to take the thickness, the intensity down. Um, I can bring the posterization up a little bit so I get more colors. But that way, um, I kind of have all of the pieces in my piece have similar elements, and that's what I'm looking for. So have fun making yourself portrait, and see you next time.